Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9. In this video, I'm gonna go through Leviathan EX1. Uh, but first, I wanna give a shout out to the community, to people who were commenting on my last video where I was talking about the struggle. And while I do think that there is a big jump in difficulty from Very Hard 3 to EX1, which I wish was a little bit smoother, the comments that you guys gave me really did help me out. Two tips in particular, which I will point out as we go through them. Probably the biggest tip was to use Red 13. I kept trying to use Tifa or Matt or uh, Yuffie, and ultimately the problem was efficiency. So I'm gonna spend a little bit extra time going through the team's setup because I realized that I'm using stuff that I don't normally use. And maybe you guys have these things, maybe you don't, but I'd be willing to bet if you don't have them, you may have other characters that can fill these roles. So if you have the idea, then even if you don't have this exact setup, maybe you can fill it in, you know what I mean, and uh, and get it clear. So, okay. First things first, he's going to be doing, Leviathan does a lot of multi and single target magic attacks, and they are water-based. So one thing we will notice is that, a tip that I got, was that he seems to always target whoever has the lowest HP with his single target attacks. So we're going to be using Aerith for that. Notice I got her just below uh, red 13 here, 27 HP below, Cloud has plenty. So we'll come to that later, but that is something to keep in mind. All right, for red setup, because the magic attacks are a thing, we are gonna be using Frenzied Fang here to decrease his magic attack. This is mid potency, it stacks to high, and it is that good even at five stars, so you only need one copy of this to work. Big deal. Next, we have Seaside Collar, which is just as big of a deal. There are several times where we need to deplete his gauge. Lightning damage is the way to do that. Um, but he will buff his lightning or thunder resistance. This potency mid on a decrease and it stacks to high as well. And again, does this at five star right out of the box. Also helpful for this fight is the boost HP, the boost lightning potency and X sigil boost. This is also, these are, this weapon was like built for this content in my opinion. All right, we've got our X Sigil down here. We have a lightning, a form of lightning damage, and then we just have a stat stick. Um, the only reason I'm using this is for the boost HP because I had a lot of trouble actually getting him up to this level of HP. For sub equipment, uh, this here is just for HP and some physical ability damage because I'm going with physical attack with him, although it's not very much. Nameless here is also HP. And then this here, this is HP, but also this buff debuff extension is I think, um, I don't know if it's a huge difference maker, but you definitely feel the difference, you know, especially when you're trying to debuff him. And we have two different ways to debuff magic attack. So, you know, adding an extra eight seconds to here uh, with 40% is a big difference uh, because it's probably like one less cast every three casts or so. And last, also important for my strategy is Sled Fang. We're using this for two reasons. One, it's another way to decrease magic attack, which is always going to be good because survivability is the name of the game here. Also, low charge speed. We want this too because we can spam it. He spams a lot of AoE hits, but they're very easy to disrupt because they have kind of a long cast animation. And so the more times you can interrupt that, obviously the more actions you get to do before he moves on you know, to the next hit or the next phase ultimately. So that is Red 13. Now coming over to Aerith, she's going to be our tank. So I made sure to give her the least amount of HP. That is important. I also equipped her main hand with Ramu's staff. And that is something I've never done before. I did that because of this water resist. 30 points without having to you know, have it by being in a secondary slot is a big deal. That will give her a lot of water resist. I also have another water resist weapon on her as a sub weapon. But these 30 points give 30% right out the gate as a main weapon. It also gives boost HP, which is important. Uh, we don't really care about what's going on over here. Secondary weapon, we've got an AoE heal. I think that's pretty important, pretty obvious as to why. Uh, we are sacrificing, though, some heal stat to basically main this weapon instead of uh, Fairy Tail. Other than that, uh, just kind of, you know, finagle the stats to where she's the lowest HP, but, you know, still has a respectable amount. I've got a lightning breach here to help with decreasing that lightning with red 13 a way to do thunder damage 
And this is probably the flex slot. Uh, I put Mana Ward in here to try to help increase or take off the uh, magic debuff that she does. And, you know, you could probably do something different if you're having trouble. But this is what I did to try to help out so that maybe Cloud wouldn't have to do two full casts. For sub equipment, uh, this is just healing and, you know, magic defense stats. This is the weapon that's giving the other water resist, another free weapon. And this is also for heal and magic defense. So making Aerith the tank works for me for two reasons. One, she has the highest innate magic defense because of the way she's set up generally. Usually if you're going for heal, a lot of those items also have good magic defense stats. Okay, we're going up against somebody who's doing a lot of magic attacks, so she's gonna be able to take those hits better. And then secondly, there's only two people that have one of these free weapons that give all this water resist. Either her or Lucia. I chose Aerith because it just kind of fits with what I'm trying to do. All right, last we have Cloud. He is almost our sole DPS. The other two can chip in, but he is where most of you know the damage is coming. He will be bringing the thunder, so to speak. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, physical attack, he's got 4,100. I could have upped that by quite a bit if I went with a different weapon, uh, say, you know, something like this. I'm sacrificing quite a bit of damage here. But again, survivability has to be your number one goal. And then you can focus on the DPS. Before I go into Cloud, I will just say, kind of the general layout of this fight is in the very beginning, he is going to start up a gauge that needs to be broken as much as possible. 100% of it broken is ideal. You need to do lightning damage, at least that's how I understand it. He's going to give himself lightning resist. So you're gonna start with red 13, you're gonna be debuffing, right? He's then gonna do a big AOE move that gives everybody um, like a high potency down or high potency debuff to their magic defense. That, he never reapplies that. And in all of the times I've ran this, no matter how far I've gotten in, and including clearing it twice, I've never seen him reapply that, but it lasts for like ever. So you have to take care of it, otherwise it just becomes too much. This is how I'm doing that in this fight, Sanctuary. So mid potency means that it'll take it down to low, right? It'll clear two of those arrows up, and then I only have to do, you know, one more arrow on each guy to be able to get them to neutral, and I won't have to worry about that anymore. But it is a big deal for the first big AoE tidal wave that he'll do, and that's the reason we want to get the gauge cleared down and we want to you know, take off the magic debuff. Okay, so you have to do a mixture of survivability and DPS and also debuffing his magic to where you don't have to do so much healing and defense that you can't get the DPS. Does that make sense? Okay, so we've got Mirasame Battle Garb. That's gonna help a lot. We have obviously Ramu as, you know, for our summon. These are all stat sticks with making sure that I have the triangle. So those are the two, you know, triangle and X. They'll be doing the breaking. Aerith will kind of help out, but she does not have an actual sigil break. You could stick that on her if you want, but I didn't want the um, AI casting stuff at their leisure. I kind of wanted to have more control over it, which is why I didn't put one on. But you, you could mess around with it and maybe see something different. Here, this is just uh, sticking a bunch of items on until I got the best stats that I could. And I was really going for... I mean, this here innately gives a ton of HP and lightning potency. So it was kind of a no brainer for, for Cloud. And then here we've got physical ability potency, which is gonna help um, because his attack stat is exactly maxed uh, thanks to this. And this also helps with our physical ability potency. I don't have a whole lot of good lightning weapons that aren't magical based as well. So that's what we're sitting on. And ultimately you can see here, level seven physical attack, level six lightning potency and level five boost ability potency. That's what I'm going with. And Cloud will probably end up doing, I would say, at minimum 80% of the damage for this fight. I just wanted to kind of explain all of that because it's kind of hard to sometimes explain all of that while the fight's going on because there's a lot of things happening. But there you have the general overview, and now we will get into the fight. Starting off, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hop on red, and we're going to do Power Fang. Uh, to get his lightning resist down. And then we're going to switch over to Cloud. Um, or I guess Aerith first. We're going to lightning breach, then Cloud. And we're basically going to try to time the stance switch and then Sanctuary to take off a lot of that debuff. 
then back to red to do one more lightning resist down, and then we have to start trying to get some DPS working. So now every time I see Cloud, I'm gonna jam whatever I can on him because I really don't want him to use Sanctuary again, and I'm using Aerith here to just clear up those last few um, magic defense debuffs. All Cloud gets in uh, as much damage as possible. And now, uh, Red has kind of been focusing on the, the Lightning Resist debuff, but I need him to do Frenzied Fang to start dealing with some of this magic attack. And here, we're kind of in a really good position. We just cleared <clears throat> the Lightning Gauge right before his charge was complete, which is going to help with the amount of damage Tidal Wave does. Here, Sled Fang is good to just kind of get the uh the two arrows down of magic attack so that you know we're we're in a good spot and then i'm gonna go ahead and stack it up to high just to take the least amount of damage from this tidal wave we're gonna go ahead and, and sanctuary as well and then just kind of hop over to Aerith to prepare to kiraga as soon as you know the tidal wave's over All right, and you can see, honestly, that didn't do that much. I mean, it was, I think, 4,000 is what the, the highest person took. And here, just try to switch dances as much as possible, but then going into the sigil break phase, um, you really just kind of need to make sure you're focusing enough on the sigils. And you can, you know, stance switch whenever he does his move. Uh, but just be careful because it does take another second when you switch back before that stance, or the before the sigils, you know, go up to breaking more than one. Here, this is where Red's Limit Break is really nice because not only is it decreasing the magic attack while we're using our ATB to break sigils, we really don't have the ATB to spare at the moment to be doing uh, Frenzied Fang. So his limit is nice because it's keeping that magic attack down so we're not taking as much damage while also interrupting Leviathan and, you know, that is also helping us take less damage. Here, just kind of focusing on making sure that we're doing, you know, as much uh, sigil breaking as possible. And I'm even letting Aerith do whatever she wants a lot of the time, but then switching back over here and there to kind of heal if I feel it's necessary. I see Sled Fang up again, and I noticed he was getting ready to do a move, so we're going to go ahead and cancel it. Keep everything good. And although you do have quite a lot of time to break these sigils, uh, every time I've done it, it has kind of come down uh, to the wire, more or less, a little bit. But that's perfectly fine. I'm using Healing Wind here. Um, you don't have to, but I'm doing it to cancel out the animation. I noticed that Red kind of needed a lot of healing, and I knew I was coming down to the wire, so I also wanted to be able to have ATB on, like, Aerith and stuff to help break sigils because even though she doesn't have a sigil break she's still breaking them anytime she casts something on leviathan then i immediately start in on cloud and trying to break him as much as possible i want to get him up to the high potency uh, lightning resist down and the reason is uh, because i'm going to try to cancel out his next move um, and i want to use judgment bolt for that but i also want to make sure it gets in maximum amount of damage so here we get the cancel we hit him with the Judgment Bolt and does a lot of damage, 95,000. I mean, that's a good chunk for us. Um, notice that the Magic Defense or Magic Attack debuff is coming off, but here we go. We get to basically, it, you know, start the, the chain all over again, right? And interrupt him, get him uh, debuffed so he's not doing as much damage. And in this phase of the fight, there's going to be one more Sigil Break phase coming up. But you really want to start, like, you want to make sure that you're able to get in as much DPS as possible. Because he keeps buffing himself throughout this fight to where his water attacks are going to do more and more damage. And so, although survivability is, you know, the utmost importance in the beginning, once you get towards the end of the fight, DPS does start to matter. Uh, because you kind of do get in a situation where you're racing with him before he, you know, kind of gets too strong and ends you. All right, here we got one cure. That should make us pretty good. And now we're going to start breaking the sigils all over again. Only this time, you know, they're less than half of the amount that they were before. You should be pretty good. But once again, uh, you can interrupt the tidal roars. And, you know, it's debuffing him as well. So that when you finally take it, you're taking less damage. Kind of a rinse and repeat type of scenario. 
Um, but now we are really starting to focus on the fact that we need to break this maelstrom. Uh, that is going to be important. And so we want to take this lightning resist down. And that's why I'm using that before I even break here. Uh, just to make sure we've got the high potency. I'm going to use Aerith uh, Healing Wind so that she has ATB free. I want to put as much into damage as I possibly can here. Because you don't have a lot of time once that sigil breaks uh, to, you know, to get all this, this damage in. Here we have Ramu up again. Same thing. And we've almost got him uh, broken here on this gauge, which is going to be good. And it is necessary. And now we're just going to pretty much DPS him as fast as possible. Um, I think because we broke this gauge, we should be able to take another hit from this. I think the first time I cleared it, I did. Uh, but this time around, I just started trying to put as much damage into him as I possibly could. I'm waiting for this. You know, you do if you see one of your debuffs uh, blinking, you do want to kind of wait for it to expire before you apply the next one, so you get a full duration buff. You know, typically instead of tacking on like an extra three seconds or whatever. And here I'm just literally kind of jamming. I do see that Aerith is about to die. Uh, so I'm going to throw one more heal at her uh, because I think that she should be able to survive. And I did lie. I said that he never applied another uh, magic defense debuff. I guess he does here at the very end. But for the most part, you don't have to worry about it once you, you know, get that off from the very beginning. So Tidal Wave's queued up. Again, I think we can survive this because I'm pretty sure I already did once as long as you broke that gauge. But I do see that like this is coming down, so I'm not even switching stances. I'm just trying to get in that Thunderstrike as fast as possible. And luckily, because Cloud has a very fast animation, it worked. And that is Leviathan EX1. Hopefully this guide helped you beat it. If it did, subscribe for future content. If you already are, just know that I appreciate each and every one of your support. If you haven't seen it yet, I do have my Discord up and running, so feel free to drop in. There's a link in, I will probably put one in the description of this video, but if I forget, there will be one um, you know, underneath my main uh, channel page. And uh, yeah, just come in, chill, talk, you know, whatever. And as always, thanks for watching.